Hello everyone, uh, my name is Evangelia and uh, this paper is about Pandora's box with correlations. This is joint work with uh, Suchi Chawla, Yifeng Teng, uh, Christos Jamos and uh, Rumi Zhang. Uh, so I'm going to start by describing the problem and our setting and then a couple of our results. So let's start with the problem. Uh, imagine that uh, we want to buy uh, our friend a Christmas present and at this point we can't really go to the mall and start uh, searching for it. But we know that this item is sold in a couple of uh, a couple of different online uh, online shops or some websites. So what what we are going to do is, since we don't know the exact price uh, its website has for the item, we need to spend some time going over these and searching uh, to find the best price or the, the cheapest uh, the cheapest option. Even though we don't know the exact price, we know that. Uh, a couple of websites usually have more expensive items or they usually have cheaper items. So we have some prior information on the price that this item might have in every website. So let's make it a little uh, more concrete. Let's say we have n different alternatives and different boxes and each of these has a price inside, have a price inside. And this price uh, is drawn from some distribution. So the D, uh, these here are the, are the distributions. We don't know the exact price, but we know that this it's drawn from this distribution. So we have some stochastic information on the price. And in order to actually learn it, we need to we need to pay something. So information does not come for free. So for example, in this case, we need to pay one. The red values are the uh, the prices, the price of information. Uh, we need to pay one in order to open box one and find out that you know the price was 42 in that case. So what, what we want to do is basically um, try to keep, keep opening boxes until at some point uh, we decide that you know, the, the value that we found so far, the best value that we found so far is good enough, we're happy with it. So we're gonna stop and uh, stop searching anymore and just get uh, the minimum value we got so far. So uh, this instantiation of prices uh, in the boxes, we will call it a scenario and we're gonna use it uh, in a little bit. So this problem has two flavors, basically. Uh, one is a minimization, uh, it's a maximization, which uh, where in that case, uh, imagine that whatever is inside the boxes is something good, it's a reward. We want it to be high. So in that case, we want to maximize whatever the maximum price is we found so far minus whatever we paid in order to find it out. So the information cost. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the minimization version, it's the same as our example with the Christmas present. So uh, what's inside the box is a price, we need it to be low. So we need to minimize whatever is the minimum price we found plus whatever we paid in, uh, in order to find it. So in this paper, we're going to focus on the minimization version of uh, this problem. And let's start by seeing what's, what's been done so far. So this is essentially Pandora's box, which was defined by uh, Weizmann back in 79. And it turns out that a very simple and elegant greedy algorithm gives the optimal. And what, what is this algorithm? So this algorithm is saying that we're gonna assign an index to every box, that's a number, it's called a reservation value. And then we're going to open the boxes in this order until, and. Uh, until our current price, our current best price that we have is better than the index of the next box. Then we're gonna stop. We don't have any incentive to continue essentially. Uh, we won't gain anything by continuing. So this algorithm is very nice, but it makes a crucial assumption that uh, the distributions are independent. So what we asked in this paper is what happens, what happens when the distributions are correlated. So in our setting, we have arbitrarily correlated distributions and we're given some access to them. Uh, so here it's worth noting that the optimal decision tree is a related problem, but in that case, uh, usually they require either small support or explicit distribution. So it doesn't exactly fit uh, in, our, uh, in our setting. Let's, let's try and see uh, what, what can we actually do? Can we actually approximate this? Can we solve this problem? Can we approximate it? So here's a hard, a hard instance of this problem. Assume that the location of the best box, so the box with the lowest value, the lowest price, uh, is somehow encoded in the prices of the other boxes. So in that case, uh, we open box I and box J, we get prices four and two, 
and we know that we need to go to box 42 to find the best value, the best price, which is zero. So the problem here is that uh, this can be some arbitrary uh, mapping between the uh, between the values in the boxes. So we can't efficiently learn this. And what did I? Uh, what was the best strategy in that case? Uh, we needed to wait until we see some prices and then just go go and find the best box. But is that the only possible strategy here? Let's see what other options we have uh, in that um, uh, in that case. So what is a strategy? Let's be a bit more formal here. A strategy is basically an algorithm that has two components. So it's telling me what is the next box I should open and when should I stop. So what I described before is the fully adaptive strategy where both both the next box and the stopping rule are both adaptive. What does that mean? It means that they can both depend on the prices I see as I open the boxes. So re recall before I opened a couple of boxes and then I decided which box should I open and when should I stop after seeing the prices of the boxes. So a slightly weaker, uh, a weaker uh, strategy or algorithm is the non-adaptive. And in that case, I need to fix the order and the stopping time before I see any of the prices. So what do I mean by fix uh, the order and stopping time? I mean that essentially I choose a set of boxes before I open anything. I open them all at once and I should have this, I decide uh, what should I, uh, which one should I pick. So I decide both of these before I see any of the prices. Another strategy that's between these two it's called, we call it partially adaptive. And what is it saying? So in that case, we fix the order of the boxes that we open, but the stopping rule can be adaptive. So this can depend on the prices I see as I open the boxes. And the interesting thing about these strategies is that uh, for independent distributions, this actually gives the optimal. So this is exactly, recall the algorithm, uh, Weizmann's algorithm I, uh, I described before. This is actually what it's doing. It's fixing the order before using this reservation value, and then we decide to stop when we start seeing prices. So let's revisit our previous question. What can we actually approximate uh, with all of these strat different strategies now? So recall the fully adaptive was hard because um, this was the, uh, the example I described before with the encoding of the location of the best box. So what about the non-adaptive? It turns out that Again, the non-adaptive is not uh, is not easy to either learn or approximate. And think about let's think about the learning part first. Imagine that there is a, a tiny probability scenario, so some instantiation of the values of the prices. Um, so there's a tiny probability scenario that uh, gives uh, it has infinite price on all of the boxes except for one. So in order to avoid uh, infinite cost, we need to either query all the boxes or sample this scenario, which has very tiny probability. So this is, this is hard to do. In terms of approximation, again, we're not very lucky. And think about uh, the following example. Think that uh, the prices inside the boxes, again, are zero or infinity. So in order, again, to avoid infinite cost, we need to find a zero for every scenario. And this is exactly the heating set formulation of set cover. And we know that set cover is uh, log m hard, is, is hard to approximate within log m where M is the number of sets, here it's the number of scenarios. So the non-adaptive strategies are again not, not a good case for us. But what we showed in this paper is that actually this partially adaptive family of uh, algorithms are, uh, can be efficiently approximated and learned. And our main theorem states that we can use polynomially many sampled scenarios, polynomially the number of boxes, uh, to efficiently find uh, a constant competitive uh, partially adaptive strategy to compete against the partially adaptive uh, optimal. So let's see how, how do we get uh, to this result. Um, first, let's think about this uh, space of partially adaptive strategies. So it turns out that they are not, uh, that this, this space of strategies is very large and this is because of the stopping rule. The stopping rule, recall, can depend arbitrarily on the, value, the prices we've seen so far in the boxes. So what we do is we define a smaller family inside this one, which we call scenario where partially adaptive strategies. And what, is, what does these families uh, do? So in that case, we fix the order of the boxes 
then the scenario is revealed to us, and then we get to decide on the stopping time. So observe that if the scenario is revealed to us, then deciding on the stopping time is trivial. So what, is, what are the, the three main steps of our algorithm? So first we draw samples of these scenarios. Then we're going to decide a good scenario where partial adaptive strategy using these samples. So we essentially assume that we know the scenario and we design a good uh, scenario where strategy. And then we're going to find a stopping rule that performs well compared to this scenario where partially adaptive strategy, but without actually knowing this scenario because we don't know it. So these are the three main components of our algorithm and I'm going, I'm going to describe them uh, in a little bit more detail now. Let's start by the, the last step, the myopic uh, stopping lemma. So in that step, we have a good uh, scenario where uh, ordering and we need to find a stopping rule, right? Because we don't know the scenario and we need a partially adaptive rule, which does not know the scenario. So what this lemma is saying is that uh, if we're given, if we're given uh, a scenario where partially adaptive ordering, then we can find a stopping rule that is too, uh, it too approximates this, uh, the cost of this scenario where strategy. And what is the stopping rule? So the stopping rule is that we keep opening boxes and we stop whenever the best price we've seen so far is at most the time we've spent uh, looking until now. So in that case, uh, and from now on, I'm going to assume that the information cost is just one. So it's, I'm just paying the time uh, I need uh, to open the box, which is one. And we can remove this assumption uh, and get uh, polynomially bounded uh, costs by just losing uh, constant factor in our results. And you can find the details in the paper. So this is our stopping rule. And this is essentially the ski rental stopping rule. And actually, if we do the analysis a little bit more carefully, uh, we get the 1.58 factor uh, of uh, ski rental by, by using actually, we're using uh, the randomized ski rental algorithm as a black box. So let's uh, forget about the proof. What is this uh, lemma saying on a high level? It's saying that if we're given a scenario where partially adaptive strategy, then we can just convert it in this black box way you, um, and get a, a partially adaptive strategy just by losing a factor of two. So we're just losing a constant factor and now we can focus on scenario where partially adaptive strategies. So the first part of our algorithm is the, the learning part. So we need to show that we can actually learn these scenario where strategies. And we actually saw that, and we can learn them efficiently from uh, a polynomial number of samples, polynomial in the number of uh, boxes. And why can we do that? So this, this is because the number of uh, possible permutations is uh, n factorial, so the number of possible orderings of the boxes. And each of these permutations has a bounded cost, so we can learn, and we can learn it with a few samples. And then we're just doing a union bound over all these permutations. So what are these two lemmas saying, essentially? We're saying that we can just find scenario where partially adaptive strategies, we can learn them efficiently, and then we can convert them to a partially adaptive strategy just by losing this constant factor of uh, 1.58. So uh, our, main, our, main, um, our main algorithm essentially is designing scenario where partially adaptive strategies to compete with the partially adaptive optimal. So uh, in this talk, I'm going to focus on a slightly weaker benchmark just because it's uh, a little bit easier to describe. Uh, this is, uh, I'm, go I'm going to describe a scenario where partial adaptive algorithm to compete against the non-adaptive optimal. So how, how do we do that? First, we're writing down the LP for the uh, non-adaptive uh, uh, optimal. So what is this LP saying? Uh, we need to minimize uh, the cost of the boxes we open. So XI is just the indicator variable of uh, a box, uh, whether a box is open or not. And then uh, ZIS is uh, the indicator again of uh, whether this box uh, is assigned to a scenario. So whether I choose the value of this box for this specific scenario S. So my objective is just, I wanna minimize the information cost plus the, the price cost. Uh, and this is uh, um, on expectation overall scenarios. 
and then the constraints are just saying that I need for every scenario, I need to choose a, a price and that I cannot choose the price of a box if I haven't opened it. So uh, what is our algorithm saying? So our algorithm is, is pretty simple. We're just opening every box with probability proportional to the fractional value of this, of this indicator variable. So xi over the sum of xi's. And then from the boxes we've opened, we're going to select uh, a specific box i and stop with probability proportional to the amount this has been actually selected in the LP. So proportional to ZIS. And uh, so for the analysis, we're just bounding the information cost and the price cost uh, separately. And it turns out that we actually get uh, on expectation the, the optimal. And how do we do that? For the, uh, let's see for the information cost first. So the probability that we stop at some specific step, we, we find that we calculate the probability we stop at the specific step. Then we're just using uh, the constraints of the LP. And this is one over the optimal information cost. So the, the actual cost is one over the probability. So we get the optimal probing cost, uh, information cost and expectation. And for the price cost, we do something similar. So we fix a scenario and then we're saying that uh, the ex what's the expected cost, the expected price for this scenario. Uh, it's the probability that we selected given that we stop at this time and then times the probability that we actually stop and then uh, times the value, the price that we pay. Uh, so again, we're using uh, the constraint of the LP. This is just algebra. We're not doing anything uh, fancy here. And we get that this is actually the optimal uh, price cost for this scenario. And then summing up over all scenarios, we get that this is at most the optimal price cost. So what, what did we show here? We saw that we can find a very good scenario where partial, uh, scenario where partial adaptive strategy to approximate the non-adaptive optimal. So now we can use our lemmas in a black box way and convert this to a partially adaptive. So find the stopping rule. So this, we, in this case, we found the ordering and then we're using the two lemmas to find a stopping rule just by losing a constant factor of two. And then we have our partial adaptive strategy. We have what we wanted uh, initially. So to sum up, what did we show here? We showed that we can actually approximate the non-adaptive using a partial adaptive within a factor of two. And here's a table with our uh, other results. So our main result uh, is uh, designing a partially adaptive strategy to compete with a partially adaptive. And this is uh, this uh, 9.22 factor. And in order to do that, we uh, essentially reduce our problem uh, to mean some set cover. Um, we also uh, we also showed some results for some uh, more uh, complex feasibility constraints. So, for example, if we want to choose k items instead of one, again we showed the constant factor approximation. And if we want to choose a matroid base of rank uh, k, we showed the log k uh, factor. And for both of these results, we're using uh, the generalized version of uh, mean subset cover. Um, for the matroid case, we also saw the log k uh, lower bound. So this is, uh, this is tight. Um, another uh, result is uh, about the maximization version. And in that case, uh, we saw that we cannot approximate the non-adaptive uh, using any fully adaptive uh, within uh, any constant. Uh, so the news weren't that good in the maximization case. So, Essentially, our work shows this trade-off uh, between adaptivity and computational complexity. And uh, a couple of future directions and uh, open questions are uh, what can we uh, actually approximate by these uh, fully adaptive strategies? This is not very clear yet. And can we actually uh, use these adaptive algorithms for more general, uh, like harder combinatorial problems? Um, thank you. <laughs>